you still have to make those changes. And so then when the person's enemy dies or uh, something shifts in their life uh, and that person's gone, they'll find another person to hate. This is just how we function as human beings. We just slide another uh, reason to feel those emotions. So I think, I think when people start to understand this, you know, I, I think knowledge is power, but knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment. So how much of this is really learning to, to just bifurcate the world into there's negative emotions that have negative neurochemistry associated with, and you said that in those states, if you're living in a perpetual state of uh, stress hormones and things like that, illness is like a step away. And then just the other side of that is understanding, but there's this whole other side of positive energy, which mm -hmm. happiness, joy, empowerment, whatever that you know, neurochemical cocktail is, but that when you're on that side, um, your immune system is more likely to function well. Like, is that uh, just sort of bringing it down to like a really base level? Yeah, is yeah. that sort of one of the big things? <clears throat> well, let's talk about it in terms of survival or creation. As I said, 70% of the time, people live in stress. And living in stress is living in survival. Now, all organisms in nature can tolerate short-term stress. You know, a deer gets chased uh, uh, by a pack of coyotes. When it outruns the coyotes, it goes back to grazing and the event is over. And the definition of stress is when your brain and body are knocked out of balance, out of homeostasis. The stress response is what the body innately does to return itself back to order. So you're driving down the road, Someone cuts you off, you jam on the brakes, you may give them the finger, and then you settle back down and the event is over and boom, now everything's back, back to normal. But what if it's not a predator that's waiting for you uh, outside the cave, but what if it's your coworker sitting right next to you and all day long you're turning on those chemicals because they're pushing all your emotional buttons. When you turn on the stress response and you can't turn it off, now you're headed for a disease because no organism in nature can live in emergency mode for that extended period of time. It's a scientific fact that the hormones of stress downregulate genes and create disease, long-term effects. Human beings, because of the size of the neocortex, we can turn on the stress response just by thought alone. We can think about our problems and turn on those chemicals. That means then our thoughts could make us sick. So if it's possible that our thoughts could make us sick, is it possible then our thoughts could make us well? And the answer is absolutely yes. So then what are the emotions that are connected to survival? Let's name them. Anger, aggression, hostility, hatred, competition, fear, anxiety, worry, pain, suffering, guilt, shame, unworthiness, envy, jealousy. Those are all created by the hormones of stress. And and psychology calls them normal human states of consciousness. I call those altered states of consciousness. So then we tend to remember those traumatic events more because in survival, you better be ready if it happens again. That's, and, and when the survival gene is switched on, you could have 10 really great things that happen to you in your day. And you just have one bad thing that happens and you cannot take your attention off that, bad, that, that unhappy thing because the survival gene is switched on. It's really interesting. How does epigenetics come into play in all this? Like what's actually happening? You've talked pretty profoundly about um, proteins and like really at a deep level, how we're signaling to our genetics to create these kinds of changes. <clears throat> what does that actually look like? Well, uh, epigenetics, epi means above the gene. And uh, many years ago after the DNA helix was discovered by Watson and Crick, uh, they said the blueprints of life, you know, all diseases are created from genes. It turns out less than 5%, more like 1% of people on the planet are born with a genetic condition like type 1 diabetes or Tay-Sachs disease or sickle cell anemia. The other 95 to 99% are created by lifestyle and by choices.